Well, congrats on that that listing. When is that? Uh, has that already gone live? It has. It went live last Monday, or let's see, no, last uh, Friday, about nine days ago. Gotcha. Any any action on it so far? Yeah, we've had two showings. The first person, and I knew it was going to be an issue. It's got dark paint all throughout the house. That was one thing for them. And the master closet is not a walk-in for such a huge house. And uh, right. the second person loved the house, thought the price was right, but the uh, they said the layout for them was wrong. So, Gotcha. You'll, you'll have that. Yeah, I, I'm going to do some reverse prospecting this morning. I noticed a couple of my hit counters had hearts. At least I saw at least one heart on the list, so I'm going to send a reverse message email to that realtor. Nice, nice. Prospecting off your own listings. Take it from, uh, for those of you guys who know Matthew's uh, newer with the company, um, just joined us about a, about a week and a half ago, mm -hmm. uh, maybe two weeks ago, and got, a, got his first listing out there and got a couple of showings on it already, but he's prospecting off of his own listing, right? So, uh, you know, everyone that's, that's viewing it and seeing it, he's, you know, falling back out and trying to get uh the business from other people so um that's that's the way to do it um so today uh rev up um and i'm not sure the expert what rev up is that's for you know a lot of you know, newer agents are, are kind of a 12-week program um to kind of get everyone up to speed obviously you're a very experienced agent but it's always nice to have uh, experienced agents on here to kind of help us out and have uh have other uh, insights and it happens to be just the, the listing agreement which is you know something that you're that you're very good at so um, hopefully you hopefully you can help us uh, do some of that. Um, everyone else have a good weekend. Anything uh, special or crazy go on? Got a Panthers win yesterday. I was at the game. That's always always nice to see. Go Gamecocks! Yeah. Man, Gamecocks <laughs> something else. I'm a Tar Heel fan. We've had a very bad weekend. Had two losses on Friday, another loss yesterday. But South Carolina, man, they've been they've had what three top fifteen wins this year. Very impressive. All right. Uh, Lance, you make it back from the beach? Or are, you, is this, are you still at the hotel right now? No, I made it back from the beach. Uh, the day I made it back, I uh, signed my first uh, contract. Um, my client wanted to buy a, a new construction. So I right. got, got that, uh, everything signed on Wednesday by Wednesday night. Nice. That's a good way to start the holiday weekend. First sign client. Congratulations. Thank you. Share my screen here. We'll we'll kind of get through this. All right. So again, module nine uh, is the, the residential listing agreement and kind of the paperwork that, that goes along with that. Um, as you can see, there's only only five slides. So this is a, a, a pretty, pretty quick one. And this is something that honestly, if you haven't done a listing agreement or if you've only done a few. A lot of it is just you guys should just be pulling this paperwork out and just reading through the entire contracts. And I'm sure Matthew will agree with that as well. You you really need to know the contract in and out as you're getting someone to sign the listing agreement, right? So you need to be very very comfortable with that. And you know we can go. We're gonna go over that today. Uh, I'm actually I've got a a listing agreement I need to write up. Uh, so we'll kind of do that as as kind of how I do it. Um, but the biggest part of this is you guys just need to be comfortable with the contract. Um, and the contracts do change. It'll probably slightly change here in a few weeks as, as January starts, as the new year begins, they'll probably revise it. So we'll probably get a slightly different version of um, the listing agreement, but um, they're, they're always kind of the same, right? So you just wanna make sure that you're very comfortable with the agreement. Um, this is this is your paychecks, right? So if you if you get a client that, that really likes you, you've done a good job, and then you get to the, the listing agreement and you're kind of fumbling through that, um, you can lose a client really quickly. So uh, a big part of, of getting the, the sale is, is being very comfortable with your, your forms, right? Um, you know, see a lot of agents be very nervous and hesitant when they get to this part and understand that these, these clients that you guys are trying to get, they can read you, right? You know, your job is, as agents is to read your clients and understand as these people, people are professionals too. They, they own these homes they're they're good too right they're gonna be reading you and when you guys are not confident with your paperwork and what it means and why they should sign it 
Um, it's not going to make them very <laughs> uh, excited to sign your paperwork, right? So, um, do you have the the seller representation agreement, uh, agency di disclosures, uh, MLS listing forms, seller disclosures, um, offers, counter offers, multiple offers, um, and then multiple counter offers? Uh, so we'll kind of go through all those different things and the, the different forms. Um, Again, kind of what I was mentioning before, reading all your contracts is the best thing for you guys. Um, each section is going to be a little bit different, and we're going to go through those here shortly uh, as I pull up, pull up each one. Uh, but again, your, your ability to explain the contract will give your clients the confidence, and that is a million percent the truth. Um, I've written with a lot of agents in their first time or two, and I lift and handle the paperwork part, and I see them kind of fumble through it and get nervous, and you see the client back up. Uh, very quickly. So um, do not go to your first couple of listing agreements without knowing these contracts frontwards and backwards, right? Um, the first time that you read these contracts should not be in front of the client. <laughs> that would be absolutely crazy to do, um, but people do it, right? Um, I, I always tell people, like, do you, would you feel comfortable going to a listing appointment today, right? Uh, Heath, if I said, hey, you've got an appointment today at two o'clock, are you ready? right question meaning do you have your listing presentation or do you feel comfortable doing comps do you feel comfortable um getting all your paperwork together and and if things go well could you have them sign that paperwork right um if the answer to any of those questions is no you need to be working on that every day right your your listing presentation we talked about this a couple of weeks ago um your elevator pitch i mean all that stuff should be just second hand so you should be able to just rattle that stuff off it should be the same thing with paperwork. So um, this one is huge too, practice writing listings. And again, we'll, we'll do that uh, this morning. We'll, we'll roll to um, um, a listing agreement here that I'm hopefully going to get signed this afternoon. Um, and it's kind of show you the way that I do it. But it definitely doesn't hurt. Practice, you know, go, go in SkySoap. You should put your own address in, make up a fake address, send it to yourself, right? Or send it to me, right? And I'll, I'll take a look at it and see if there's anything missing on it. But um write up several listings and you know do it do it regularly um until you're super comfortable with it because there's gonna be times where you need to do it and you need to do it quickly and you want to make sure there's no mistakes on it so um let's pull up some of this the exclusive right to sell listing agreement 13 pages that's a lot right um for the most part, it's pretty pretty basic stuff, right? But this is this is what you're going to sign that says that they're going to exclusively work with you guys as the agent to sell their house, right? Um, has everyone seen this before? Everyone read all the way through this? Yes, yes. Maisha, have you been through it? Okay, okay. Eve, Roddy. Tom, have you have you been through this yet? Yeah, yet, no yet. Okay, okay, no worries, no worries. Um, so we'll, I'm going to pull it up on um, my screen as well, so we can fill it out as we go. But uh, again, this is 13 pages. Um, I'm not sure when the last time this one was updated. Uh, I'm going to pull up the more updated one here in just a minute. But um, again, this is just going to kind of go through everything about their house, things that don't convey, things that do convey. Um, the compensation, right? What you guys need to make sure that's on there. The listing price, obviously, something you guys need to agree on with your clients. And some of these other, other terms, which I'll pull up here in just a minute. How much are you going to give to the buyer side, right? Um, very, very important that you that you have that in there. Um, when does it when does it go live? Are you doing coming soon? Has the owner owned the property for at least one year or less? Um, are they under bankruptcy? So another big part on page 11, will, will they be okay with you being a dual agent if, if that comes up? right um doesn't always come up and majority of the time you don't know if it's gonna come up before it happens unless you happen to have a buyer for that property already but 
I tend to try to always steer them towards, you know, if it pops up, we'll we'll handle it as we go and you'll have to sign something else at that point in time. But I genuinely, most people are going to say they do, and they would be okay with that. Um, and obviously if you guys can get both sides of a transaction, you guys are doubling your money. So it's a, a good way to do, <laughs> to do business. Um, and then obviously um, you have this kind of filled out in your templates. Uh, so you don't have to type in all this stuff every time and they're signing up here. Um, so it is, it is a pretty very basic forms to go through. Uh, we'll go through this, the, the property disclosure. I'm gonna pull that up here in just a minute. Um, let's see, Kayla, what, what would you describe the property disclosures as? I think you're on mute. Sorry, I'm using my phone today. Um, the property disclosure pretty much lets you know just about kind of everything on the surface level, like right away if there's any issues that the previous owners or the sellers are aware of. Gotcha, okay. Lance, who, who fills this out? Uh, the seller fills it out, the homeowner. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dong, if I have yes all the way down, what does that mean? Uh, it means um, they acknowledge of like uh, whatever on on those form to sell. Yeah. So so yes on the way down means yes or something wrong, right? No in the middle means no, there's nothing wrong. As, as far as I know, there's nothing wrong. It, ideally, uh, on every property source, you guys could have no all the way down on every page, right? In a, in a perfect world. That's that's not the case. Um, what, is, what does no representation mean, Roddy? You there? Did you ask me? Yes, yes. Uh, if you've got no representation all the so way down. For some reason, sound is very low right now. Barely. I guess I log out and go back. That's okay. I'll, that's okay. To we'll, answer we'll, we'll, representation, means, uh, the seller uh, doesn't know, doesn't want to say if something is with the property. Right. Um, so no representation means it typically means that this they just don't know, right? No uh, any responsibilities kind. Right. So basically they're not they're not taking any responsibility. Um if, if they know but they just don't want to disclose it, that's kind of a different case. Uh but for the most part, no representation means they don't know. Um Matthew, I'm sure you've you've had this several times and I, I have this often as well. There, there are good reasons why people put no representation, right? It's not just because they're lazy, they don't want to disclose anything. What are what are some reasons why you've seen people put no representation? It could be to protect themselves from liability because uh, once, once you state something as uh, yes or no on here, then you become responsible for what you say. So it could be that they say, well, there's no... Uh, there's no right of way or no easement on my property, but then you find out later when it's surveyed that, you know, the back corner of the property has an undisclosed easement. So now they've got to explain or backtrack and figure out how to compensate the person that bought the property or is buying the property, make them happy. Right. So the, so, so what Matthew's saying is that it's, this isn't just some willy nilly form that, you know, if they get something wrong, it's not a big deal. I mean, this, this can be, this can be very important on whether people put an offer in or not when they, when they view, view your disclosures, because when you have a listing, this is one of the forms that you're going to upload into the MLS so people can see that before they put an offer in. Um, so depending on how it's filled out, you know, maybe offers are, you get offers you don't, or you get offers that are less, they're not. But if you've got something that's on here that's wrong, um, it can come back and haunt you after the sale, right? Um, so there are times that their people are living in the house and they just genuinely don't know certain things. And easement is is a very common one. It's it's you may not even know, right? Um, 
another big reason and I see this happen a lot that people put no representation all the way down is they have tenants in the house, right? Uh, maybe they've had a tenant in the house for the last five years. They haven't stepped foot in that house in five years and now they're going to sell it, right? So they can put no representation all the way down there because they genuinely don't know the condition of the house, right? Um, that's a that's a pretty common reason. Um, you see a lot of a lot of folks that are inherit a house, right? Maybe it was their their parents' mountain house and they've never been to that house and they get it. They've they they don't know they don't know the shape. Um, I've got a listing. I'm trying to hopefully get this week or next week. Very similar situation. Her dad's owned the house. She's only been to it a couple of times. It's six hours away from her. Uh, I'm trying to schedule time for her to take off two days of work so she can go there and I can meet her there. But she doesn't know any anything about the house, right? So she will probably put no representation all the way down. So there are definitely reasons to do that. Um, ideally, you know, your your homeowner is going to put yes or no. And again, if, if it's no, that's great because it means no, there's nothing wrong with the house. Um, but again, they they do need to be honest here, right? So you do need to have them checking these boxes and making sure that what they're putting on there is is correct. Um, Keith, if they tell you that the roof is leaking, but they want to go ahead and put no down here, what what's your recommendation there? Um, I would advise them not to do that um, because that's that's a lie. I mean, it's not true. Yeah. And um, especially especially if they've disclosed that to you, right? Right. I mean, once it's once it's out there in the in the public, you know, and once you've heard it, it's a material fact. It, it, yeah, it's a material fact and it's it's out there. You've got to, you know, convince them to, to, to put yes to that there's something wrong with the roof or, it, you know, a lot of times it, it might be better just not work with them, right? I mean, they're, you know, it, it shouldn't very rarely happen, but I mean, if you've got someone that's lying on their property disclosure, that's a client you might want to walk away from, right? Because that's a client that might put you in a bad situation down the road. So, um, have you know? I, again, when you're when you're doing this, you don't want to make this a big a big deal and a deal killer. You want to say, hey, anything wrong with the house that you know of? No, everything everything that you know in the house works correctly. Um, you know, read through this, but you you can pretty much put no all the way down, right? Uh, and then if they can check out the stuff, is it a heat pump? Is it baseboard heat? Um, exterior of the house, when was the roof installed? If you can have the basic information you're filled out the best as possible, it, it does it does really help when you're having showings and getting offers, right? Um, <clears throat> go ahead, Matthew. I just happened to think about this particular listing. Um, the lady, her, her husband died and the roof had been replaced, but she doesn't know when. Right. So, we have no idea when the roof was replaced, so we she had to put no representation. Uh, so in 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 the line where it says approximate age, we just put unknown but newer, because you can see obviously by looking at it, it's almost a brand new roof. But she doesn't remember when he had it done. Right. So you know. Yeah, I mean those are that's a perfect example of you know it, it's you're you're being honest, you put no representation, but you're you know. You know that it's been done, but you're not making up a year. You're not, you know, lying about something. But it, yeah, I mean, that's just one of those things. Like, if they know for a fact, put it down. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot of little little things that can can slow you up. Again, try to get through this first page as quick as possible, right? I mean, ideally, if there's nothing wrong, it's a, you know, house is a great shape. This can be knows on the way down, and they're going to know this basic stuff, right? If there's something they don't know, just in this part, they can they you can skip it, right? But if you're leaving this all blank, what's going to happen is, I'm sure this happened to Matthew as well, is you're going to get a text from every showing, how old's the water heater? When was the roof replaced? Right? Um, you're just going to get question after question, the same questions over and over again, where if you just had it filled out on here, you would get a lot less questions. Um, Brian? Yes. I have a question for you. Uh, let's say you have, um, the seller knows that something is wrong with the property, but anyway, uh, kind of like check no representation, right? So after the closing, let's say the the, uh, the deal is closed, everything, everybody is happy, and later on, uh, the, the buyer finds something wrong uh, with the property. Can you be uh, liable, like a, as an agent, or um, can can they sue the seller, the agent, the listing agent, or whatever it is? Uh, do they have this right where it's like as long as it's closed, it's done? 
No, that's it. It's it's not just because it's closed doesn't mean it's done. Um, and and that is that's why you should not be lying on here. You know the, the liability really depends on again. You know like someone was with with Heath. If you know something, you need to disclose that, right? But as an agent, you know I don't. I, I'm not always under their their crawl space. I don't know that their septic needs to be pumped. Um, you know a lot of the stuff we we don't know. So if they're if they're not disclosing that to us, that's really not on our hands. But yeah, that that seller can be liable after a sale. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so the and, seller, not the agent. A, again, if if you don't, I mean, they can they can try to sue you. You just have to prove to them that you didn't know anything. Um, but again, that's just one of those things where like you want them to be as honest as possible. And if I've got somebody that that just doesn't know or you know is kind of on the fence, I'd rather them put no representation and then put no if if they're not one hundred percent sure. Um, okay, and that's exactly what Matthew said as well. Like. The house, the roof is newer. They don't know the exact year, so just put no representation. That way, everyone's okay. kind of protected. But, but yeah, it, it can come. It can come back on you for for sure. Um, and if you know they have any kind of proof to a seller that says that you were kind of, you knew that the roof was leaking, and you you got text or something showing that, yeah, you could definitely absolutely be in trouble, right? So just one of those things where like, you know, you don't want to make this form a big deal, but you you do want to make sure that like, hey, you are liable for this. Um, so the property disclosures are pretty, pretty important. And, you know, even on the, the buyer side, right. I know a lot of you guys are going to be doing a lot of work with the buyers just because you have a great showing and the client loves it. And you, you, you know, don't automatically assume you got to put, you're going to put an offer in, like go on the MLS, download these forms and see what's wrong with it. And then, and then go over that with your clients first. Right. Cause if they've got yes on a lot of this stuff that you didn't notice in the house, maybe your offer should be different. Right. Um, so even on the buyer side, you guys should be, you guys should be looking at these forms every time. And like, I think we was like last week or the week before, you know, you guys are going to have your buyers sign this when you send over the offers. Right. Um, so make sure that you're, you're actually reading these, you know, a lot of agents will kind of just sign, um, initially at the bottom of all every page and kind of move on. Um, you should be reading through these and, and seeing what's, what you're getting into because if they've got yes on a lot of the stuff that means when it goes to be inspected, right. It's probably going to pop up. Right. Um, and if you've got a client that's, you know, not going to have any money to fix anything, it's going to need everything fixed. And, you know, you put in a low ball offer. Well, now, you know, the seller might not be willing to negotiate with you. Right. So very, very important form. One of the most important forms on, on those thing and buying side. Uh, this is a this is a form that you guys will see a lot. Um, the agreement to to amend the contract. Um, you know, the I, I would say the I think maybe the most common thing on here, Matthew. Maybe you can maybe you have a different opinion. Um, the the due diligence period gets changed a lot. Uh, is one of the things that you see on here quite a bit. Um, Misha, why would you why would you think a due diligence period need the needed to be changed? Well, you asking me or everybody anyway I'm, I'm sure, do you want you want to answer oh i've had a couple where yes. i was uh, oh excuse me because because she's cutting it out um yeah matthew you can go ahead while oh, she's getting reconnected i've had a few it was because of uh financing of the buyer, uh, something needed to be corrected. I've also had it because of a uh, big thing, like in Union County is getting the, uh, for uh, part test, the uh, officials to come out and do that sometimes takes way, way longer than your due diligence period. So you wanna try to get that done before your due diligence period's over and even surveying. Yep. Yeah, so there's, there's a lot of reasons why the due diligence period could be extended. And again, that due diligence period is from the time that the buyer puts in the offer, the, the time that they have to have to do all their due diligence, right? Their inspections and surveys and all that good stuff, right? So if the buyer is not going to be able to have that done in time, then oftentimes you're going to get a due diligence period extension, right? Um, not ideal, but it, but it happens, right? Um, so it's definitely not a deal killer, uh, nor should you let it be. Um, but it's just something that, that does happen. Um, the due diligence fee changing um, to the seller, um, not something that's going to happen very often, but 
maybe maybe in the de description that Matthew brought up where they, they need more time for the survey, they need an extra week. Maybe the seller says, hey, I'll extend it for another week if you give me another $2,000 because I'm keeping my property off the market where I know I have other offers I can sell it. So that might be a situation where they may request more due diligence money, right? For, for an extension. Um, the purchase price. Why would, why would the purchase price ever change? Lance? <laughs> I'm, I'm sure there's several reasons why purchase price would change. Um, you know, off the top of my head, nothing's hidden, hidden coming up to me, but I know there is reasons why the price changes. So I have a question. You go ahead. Would it be if it doesn't if meet the appraised value? Okay, so that that's definitely one, right? Um, so there are times, especially in this crazy market that we've had, uh, say the house is listed at 200 and and the buyer put an offer for 220 and the appraisal came back at 210. Um, you know, either the buyer's gonna come up more or the sellers gonna come down or they're gonna meet in the middle, right? So maybe in that scenario, they they agree to meet at 215, right? Um, that would be a, a change of purchase price, right? Um, so the appraisal is a, a great example of why that would change. Um, anyone think of another reason? Like if the uh, property has damages, like yeah, so things to be get fixed. Yeah, so a, a lot of times in lieu of repairs, right? You might change the price, right? Um, so a lot of times the seller will say, "Hey, I'm not going to fix that back deck. I'm not going to put um, a vapor vapor barrier in the crawl space." But what I will do is I'll come down on the price, right? Um, so you can come down on the price or you can do a credit, right? So there's a couple of different options there. But um, so yeah, so purchase price can change for, for several reasons. Um, settlement date. So down here. So again, so we're all clear. Settlement date is the day of closing, right? Obviously, we don't want that date to close because that means we get paid later. But there are you know lots of reasons why a settlement date might change. Um, anybody want to jump in there on why, why that might happen? Uh, uh, settlement date can change if, uh, like on new construction, they have to get the occupancy permit, correct? Yeah. So you're, you're, you're going to probably go through a couple settlement changes on this, on your first transaction. Um, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, new, new construction that, that date can, can definitely change, right? Um, you know, that, that date of, of building a whole house. Uh, it's really just an estimate and, you know, they try to do a good, a good time with, you know, Hey, 60 days, this house will be completed, but you know, that, that could change, right? We don't know the weather. We don't know, um, it, you know, the, the economy and how quickly they can get lumber and all this other stuff, right? That, that can be delayed. So, um, settlement date can, can change often. Um, financing has a lot to do with it, right? You know, the buyer's financing, you know, a couple of days before closing, you know, they don't have that CD. And again, you need that CD how many days before closing? Three, right? The buyer doesn't have that three days before closing. And guess what? That settlement date's going to change, right? Um, if the buyer needs more time to do repairs, that date can change, right? Um, there's a lot of different reasons why that might change. Um, again, not a deal killer. It has to close a week later or two weeks later. But ideally, you know, for for your sake, for the attorney's sake, who's already scheduled that, you want to try to keep these on track the best that you can. Um, but definitely don't freak out when your due diligence period gets extended uh, on either side of the deal or settlement date gets extended, as long as you know things are trending in the right direction. Um, escrow agent, I, I have seen this happen as well. Um, the escrow agent can change. Um, I had one not too long ago. Uh, it was a, a mobile home, it was a single white actually. And we got down to the end and the attorney said, actually, I don't do single whites. And we <laughs> kind of had to change, last minute change. I uh, got to get it into another attorney's hands and kind of start that process over. So, um, but there are a few reasons why, you know, you would change attorneys as well, but, um, so yeah, so agreement to amend contract, uh, lead-based paint, 
we all know what year it is, right? That you have to have this form filled out, 1978. 70, um, yeah. Yep, yep. So if it's, if it's older than 1978, you want to make sure that you get this filled out. Um, you know, again, ideally, it's this one is checked, the bottom one here, and the bottom one's here. Um, ideally, meaning there's no, no lead paint in the house, right? Um, so the seller is going to initial here and here and check here and check here initial here um as the agent you will initial here as well and you will also sign um so that is a, the lead paint disclosure uh, again make sure that you're you're getting that signed um on your listings and then again on the buying side make sure that your clients are signing this disclosure when you're sending over the offers Mineral oil gas rights. Again, this this is on this is on every on every house, right? Every every deal is going to have this this filled. So it doesn't matter what year the house is. Uh, if you haven't seen this, you will see this a lot. Um, ideally, I mean, this is basically saying the the oil, uh, minerals, gas rights all all come with the property. They haven't been severed from the property, right? Understand that the land and the oil and the, the minerals can be severed in different ways. Um, this this form basically says that, that yes, they have been severed. No, they have not, or no representation. Kind of like the property disclosure. Again, ideally, these are all no's, right? Um, Matthew, any any weird situations where you've seen yeses on here? Not yet, but I do know it happens. Um, I have a friend that lives in Charleston, West Virginia. And almost everybody in his area, the the oil and gas rights have been severed from their property, and they're all getting a little. Uh, I call it a penance. It's it's basically uh, worthless. Yeah. yeah, it it pays it pays the taxes, but that's it. But they've got uh, underground pipelines and fracking going on all around them. Yeah. So, so that, it, that's, it, yeah. It's funny that you mentioned West Virginia because that's what I always say. Like this is more for West Virginia because there's gold in the hills and you know that you know like things are severed because of like oil and and, and gold and things like that. But but yeah, so that's a that's a good reason uh, that you might have a yes. Um, you're not going to see it a whole lot. Again, for the most part, this will be all no's or what you'll see is no representation on the first one. No, no, no representation. No, no. Um, it's pretty common. If you see one that is all yeses, <laughs> almost every time. If I call the listing agent and say, hey, uh, can you walk me through this uh, oil, mineral, gas, why it says all yeses, it's almost always a mistake, right? They almost put it, it it's usually a mistake. Um, so again, uh, again, you do need to make sure that you do have this uh, completely filled out. Again, read it from top to bottom so you can describe it. Um, but again, uh, a pretty, pretty simple form. Um, so yeah, who any, will buy the, yeah, who will buy the oil and gas, right? Um, I think Matthew mentioned I mean, it could be it, 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 you know the, the oil company you know, has pipelines underneath it. Um, yeah, again, not not something not something that's going to happen very often. I mean, maybe you're near a stream or something, and and that reservoir you know flows somewhere, and 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 they need the rights to that maybe the city would buy it or something. But um, again, not not a very common thing in North Carolina, but it's it's obviously in North Carolina for a reason. Uh, and, I, and I'm assuming it's more for the, the East Coast, like the Outer Banks types areas. Go ahead. And actually, it came about because of uh, something that happened in, near the East Coast. Um, there was a development yeah. that was built out there, and they had signed disclosures about there being um, fracking going on in the area. And mm -hmm. uh, so they're, uh, and I, I forget if it was Exxon or Mobil, so they're their drill station is like over a mile away, but they they don't just go straight down. They go down and then go to the left or right, and they can go for miles. And so, right. when when they do that fracking, it uh, they use natural gas for explosions. So people are sitting in their house and they're after these houses are built, they're sitting there and getting like a small earthquake every few minutes. You know, right. So uh, that's how all that one of the big reasons that came about because of fracking. Right. Yeah. And again, we're, we're surrounded by states that do a lot of mining and, and things like that as well. So 
Um, yeah, a, a lot more in the coast. I mean, we're not going to see nearly as much in, in, in the Charlotte area. But again, this, this is a form that you, you do need to have signed on, on everyone. Uh, and again, if you ever run into something weird where your, your seller's not sure, uh, again, this, this shouldn't be something that you ever slow you down in a deal. I mean, it should be, as long as you know, there's nothing that you don't own as far as oil mineral rights, and it should be notes all the way down. But again, if something comes up, um, you know, get your, you know, Andrea on the phone or, or whoever and, and ask them. Um, so lead base, oil mineral gas, property disclosure, um, agreement to a man. So that's, that's the majority of them. I'll share my, and again, you guys all have access to this, right? You guys can all go through Skyslope. Um, you guys can get all of these and read them all. Um, you should be able to very quickly um, put a package together so you can see um, how they work, right? So when you understand when you're in Skyslope, you don't want to send these individually, right? You want to send them as, a, as an envelope, as a package. So you're sending all five or six documents at one time. Uh, practice doing that, right? Practice sending that to yourself, like right? send it from your real estate email to your personal email and see see how that looks on your side. So when you're opening that up, you're not getting 20 different emails, right? Make sure that it looks correctly. Make sure that you can sign it. Um, so I've got a, no one, no one steal this, um, but this is the client that I'm gonna go see this afternoon and hopefully, hopefully get the listing uh, up in Salisbury. Um, I don't know why I've been in Salisbury so much, but that just happens to me where I keep uh, getting clients from. But um, it's a little house up there. It's a 1300 square foot. So um, these are the five documents I've got, the listing agreement, property disclosures, oil, mineral, gas, uh, working with real estate agents, right? And then the lead-based lead paint. Um, so I've already you know, put my clients in here. Um, on the lead that I got, it just, it just said Lisa. Uh, but what I did is I went to, all right, well, that's no longer there. Um, I went to the property disclosures and realist and pulled up that, which I'll show you. So when you, you know, when you get a leader, you're talking to somebody, you know, before you go out there, you know, find out who all's on the deep. So even though I, the only name that I had was Lisa, I also saw that David was on there as well, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and add him on there. Uh, so when I get out there, um, unless he has passed away, which, you know what will happen um then i'll then i'll take them off but um this is the the realist tax for this house um it's thinking it's probably worth between 160 and 280 that's a pretty huge gap um this is the information on it they had listed it uh back in 2010 for 99,000. looks like it did not sell it expired um I can see that they refinanced back in 2007 for 85,000. And that's about it. This is the shape of the property. So I'm gonna go out there this evening. Obviously I'm going to bring this form with me. Um, I'm gonna try to run some comps. Um, I was trying to do this briefly before I got you guys on here, but um, wasn't having a lot of luck. Um, it, I'm gonna have to go out farther. Uh, cause this is a smaller house. I know it's not worth 440. It's the same size as this house, but, uh, so I'll have to spend some more time doing my comps, but just getting my paperwork together. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and open up all this. And again, I use dot loop. I use a different, um, form for my paperwork, but nonetheless, it doesn't really change anything. Um, so this is how I'm going to have it filled out. Right. So first and last name up here. Why do I have Realty One Group Revolution right here instead of myself? Anyone have an answer for that? Go ahead. The company owns the listing. You're a representative of the company, That's unless right. you're the owner of the company. <laughs> that is absolutely correct. So um, again, this is always going to be Realty One Group Revolution right here, right? Um, so understand that they they are signing a listing agreement with the firm, right? So. Um, the reason I mentioned that is because, you know, for a lot of you, you'll be taking your first listings hopefully soon, right? Um, so understand that like, they're not just signing a listing agreement with you. They're signing with Realty One Group, who's very established, who has the marketing and the branding, right? So 
it, you know, again, whether it's your first listing or your million listings, I mean, you, the client doesn't really need to know that. But if you're if you're sharing that with them, like, hey, you, you're going to be my first listing, um, which is up to you if you're going to disclose that or not. Um, let them know, like, hey, like I'm new, but Realty One Group is not new, right? So you're signing a listing with the firm. That, that's the only reason I mentioned that right there, right? So you can have the confidence that the firm is going to make sure that, the, that you have it listed correctly and you're going to do the right things. Um, this is something that a lot of agents will will miss. This needs to be checked. Uh, the effective date shall uh, begin when the agreement is signed, right? Um, if you don't have this signed or checked right here, you don't have an agreement, right? In order to have an agreement, there has to be a beginning and an end date, right? Um, so a lot of times you know, you're, you're gonna have the expiration date right here, right? So I put, I always do six months again, that's up to you guys. Some people do three months. Um, I, I like to do six. Um, six months sounds like a long time and it, it can be, but also understand that, you know, if you go under contract a couple of times and it falls through at the end and then they take it off for two or three months, six months can actually happen pretty quickly, right? Um, I like to do six months to protect myself, um, to, to make sure that, that I have time to, to get to the whole process. But again, make sure this is checked. So this contract is valid today if they sign it today. And I would actually sign here. So look at that beautiful signature. Voila. So I'll put my signature on there. Um, nothing really goes on page two. Um, I'm just guessing this is the price that I'm gonna list at. Um, I'm guessing it's probably 199. Um, comps might say a little bit higher, but I'm I'm just gonna for for sake of getting this fit out with you guys on here um depending on how it looks in person maybe maybe i'll go up to 225 on this one but it, again it's hard to say i haven't been out there in person um but ideally if i could get it at 199 that's where i would like to get it so um on this one just just rough roughly guessing i'm guessing cash or conventional um when i get out there depending on the shape maybe i would add in fha or va right uh, but for right now i'm just gonna Soon that maybe it's it's that um, I always like to do six percent on my my listings. Um, again, that's that's kind of a up to you guys and how you guys work that. And you know, if you if you have a listing coming up and you want some advice on that, I'd be be happy to to talk to you about that. Um, I I listed one uh, last Tuesday. Um, I did seven percent actually, and uh, just got an offer on it this morning. Um, which we'll hopefully hopefully accept. Um, the I usually put sixty or ninety days in here, right? Uh, this is after the expiration of the contract. If the seller basically goes to the buyer that you've brought to them, right? Uh, I'm saying that you're you're protected for that amount of time, right? Um, and that's a way to kind of protect ourselves from sellers just waiting till your listing agreement expires and then they just circumvent the, the real estate rules and don't pay commission, right? Um, it happens. Matthew, what do you normally put in here? I see you smiling. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, I have before made it equal, equal shares, but somebody told me recently, you don't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I brought it up. Um, so again, the the percentage, the whole percentage is right here, six, right? So that is that is what the person selling their house is agreeing that they're they're paying realty one group six percent to, to sell their house, right? This is saying that we're going to share X amount of that with the buyer's agent, right? I always put two point five, right? Um, and again, you know, most people, if it's six percent, they're going to do three and three, so you would put you know three here. Um, understand that this is this is either or so it's not 2.5 and 2.5 it's either you know a sub agent um or a buyer's agent right um so it's not it's not both right so they're not paying 2.25 2.25 and six percent uh basically what this is saying is whoever brings a buyer will get 2.5 percent and the other three and a half percent will go to us right um what what most people are going to do is if this is six, they would put three. Um, 
I, I do mine a little bit differently. I, I feel like I, I deserve more. So I, I take three and a half and give the buyer two and a half. Um, but a lot of people would put three here, right? Um, you know, there's times where maybe you have to drop your commission. Maybe it's a friend or relative or um, you want to do 5% commission, right? And then obviously you're not going to do 3% to the buyer because that would only give yourself two, right? So you want to adjust that to two. Does that make sense to you guys? Do I have any questions about that? Put this back at six. I forget about that. Um, any, anyone have uh, questions on commissions and, and how that works? Uh, Brian, can you go back to when you split like like two two and a half, two and a half, where you check like two boxes there? Um, yeah. So again, um, this is just for the different type of you know, whether it's a buyer's agent or 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 sub agent. It's either 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 or. I mean, ninety nine percent times to be a buyer's agent, right? Uh, but it could be a, a sub agent or something like that. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's it's either or. Either you're basically here and you're going to pay whoever brings the buyer to two point five percent. But yeah, I, I know me just check both of these. I I could probably just just check this one, um, representing the buyer. Uh, gets two and a half percent, but I, I check both, but it's, it's either or they're not, you're not, they're not paying both. You're not paying, you're not giving away both. Uh, so it's either one of those. Um, I do have a question. Yeah. All right. So you have thrown this out ahead of time and you're taking it for your clients to sign once you get there. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Um, but not, not how everyone does it. Um, again, a lot of times you're you're not going to agree on the price and 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 you know there's times where I'm there and I I have to change this or I have to change this or I have to change the listing price right so the listing price you don't always know going in I normally have a, a pretty good idea what I, I I'm wanting to list it out before I go out there but um, I like to just have something in place where hey if if one ninety nine nine is what they agree on boom I've got the paperwork ready all I've got to do is turn my my iPad around and sign 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 right. Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of times, you, but a lot of times you're going to be filling this out and you know, in, in front of your client or sending it to them after you meet with your client that evening. But um, basically, I, basically, you want to be able to go through, you know, if it's going to get to that point, you want to be able to get to that process pretty quickly, right? And you want to you want to know what needs to be filled in where um, and get it done. But yeah, you, you don't have to do it in advance. Um, I was just wondering, like, if someone, if the person's had uh, was deceased and you have his name on the deed, like, so do you change it there immediately? You take your laptop there with you, and you yeah, just remove so I, it instead of having to amend the form. Yeah, so I would, yeah, I would just just take take him off, uh, for okay. example. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's a very good question. So yeah, and that's definitely happened before um, that I've gone out there and the significant other is is pass away the deed hasn't been changed yet and um you know they're going through that process and, and then doing that but um so that does happen so there's times where you'll put your foot in your mouth and ask where hey where's david at well david passed away two weeks ago and it's sad but that's why they're selling the house um commencement of marketing um i think i just ben. yes how how do you convince the the seller of the higher uh, commission to get the higher commission let, uh, I'm asking because you, you said uh, uh, that you got uh, you were so lucky that you got actually a seven percent commission. Sometimes they are like more kind, like they are wow when when they hear like five percent or six percent. So, um, what what you'll say to to the, convince them that uh, this is actually a fair one? Yeah. So the one I did seven percent on last week, um, it it was a smaller property. Um, so usually a smaller property, especially under hundred thousand, I'll, I'll go higher. Um, this one was one one fifty, um, but it, this explains this to me more work um, on my end to get it sold um, with the condition of the house, and that was that was why we decided to to go a little bit higher. Um, but there's a lot of times. I mean, I don't. I mean, you guys will will sell this too, and I don't. I don't turn down any business. I mean, I'll sell a sixty thousand dollar trailer, uh, but if I do. It might be a 10%, right? Um, because I, I still need to get paid. Um, and you know, getting three and a half percent of 60 grand is not not a whole lot, right? But if I can bring that up more, I mean it's obviously worth my time, but 
Um, at the end of the day, you you know, you really don't want to turn down any business because that sixty thousand dollar trailer might lead into you selling their mother in law's house for five hundred thousand, right? Uh, and that's that's how I that's how I look at it. And and Matthew, maybe you do it differently, but I I I'm the type of person like if if they need help, I'm willing to help them uh, because at the end of the day, that's going to lead me to to more business if I do my job good. So I I I like the referral side of it. So um, obviously, if if everything was a million dollar price point, that'd be fantastic. But that's that's not the case. Um, but yeah, so I, I normally would go over six on on lower um, lower selling prices. Thank you. Yeah. Of course. Uh, your marketing day, um, you're going to put a date in here. Uh, I'm not sure what date we'll choose for that yet. Um, are they okay with having a sign? Are they okay with open house advertising on the internet? These are pretty much always going to be clicked. Um, there are times where they don't want to sign out there. Um, and that is that is fairly common. They don't want their nosy neighbors. They want they don't want anyone else to know. Um, I don't look at that as a bad thing. Um, that's just one less thing I have to take to the house, right? If they're okay with the sign, though, that's obviously a good way for you to get business, right? People call for your yard sign. That's that's kind of like free business. Um, and will the seller allow a lockbox, right? Um, so you always want to make sure this is checked or not. Uh, do they give you permission to basically have access to their house when they're not there? Um, there, there are times where they might say no. And um, I just had a listing the week before last. It's under contract right now. They just went under contract. Um, I click no on this one. Um, the, the seller's husband is, is ill and in the house and cannot leave the house. So they, somebody will always be there. So they opted to not allow for a lockbox because someone will always be there. Um, and I need to have special permission to allow someone in that house. Uh, and we actually only allow one person in that house and that person put an offer, thankfully. Um, so there are definitely situations where you, you won't have a lockbox. Um, a little advice for you guys, like when you guys are going through the process, um, you know, I'm kind of pre-closing as, as, I'm, as I'm with my client you know, hey, just curious, I know your front deck doesn't have easy access to the driveway. Like, would you prefer having your lockbox on the back door, right? Like, well, I'm talking about that kind of stuff as we're going through the process. And like, yeah, yeah, back door is fine with me, right? And then as we're going through it, like, hey, I know it's raining tomorrow, but what if, what if I had my photographer on Saturday? Is Saturday going to work for you, right? And I'm getting them to commit to different things about the listing um, as, as we go, right? So you you're going to kind of know, and Matthew, maybe you do yours a little bit differently, but I'm, I'm using those kind of tools as I go um, to A, get them to go ahead and commit to me and kind of pre-close them. But B, when I get to this point, I already know that this is a no, right? Because we, we just talked about they don't want it, right? Um, you know, I already know the, the live date because I just told them like, hey, if I have my photography here on Saturday, um, it's going to take him a couple of days to edit. Maybe, maybe next Wednesday would be a good day to go live. Would that work for you? Right. So I'm kind of doing that stuff before I even get to the paperwork. Right. So as I'm, as I'm building my rapport with them, as I'm talking to them, as I'm getting them to, to like me and explain that I'm the right person to sell their house, you know, I'm already kind of asking those next questions. Um, it's good because it means they're, they're going to move forward with you guys, but it also makes it easier when you're doing this. Um, because to, keep, to, to answer your question, there are a lot of times that you're doing this in front of them, right? So um, you, you want to be able to kind of roll through this pretty quickly and, and know, know these numbers and these dates um, as, you, as you go. Um, has the owner owned the property for at least one year? You, you want to make sure this is, this is checked. Um, bankruptcy. So, so the, the one that I just got an offer on this morning, they, they are under bankruptcy protection, right? So we have to sell it very quickly uh, because there's a, a, a pending bankruptcy. Um, so on that one, I clicked yes. Um, not the one I'm going to today, but um, again, you'll, you'll want to read through all of the stuff, right? Um, do, they, do they have liens, um, termite, all, all this kind of stuff. A, a lot of the stuff, um, I don't want to say this sound bad. I, there's a lot of times some, a lot of stuff is left out, right? Uh, I'm not I'm not filling in uh, who their mortgage person is, how much they owe, the the address of their their lender. Um, a lot of that stuff will be left out because once 
once you get an offer, once the attorney gets all that uh, their hands on it, they're gonna they're gonna handle that kind of stuff. Um, is there a property lease? Um, have they done an FHA appraisal? Again, the majority of the time that's gonna be no, and and that stuff will be left blank. If, if you know the information, then you can put it there. But um, for the most part, the stuff that I filled out is what really needs to be get on there. Uh, again, a begin date, end date, listing amount. Um, you want to make sure that you have uh, some of this other stuff you 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 may or may not know. Um, you know, a lot of times the the, the seller is typically not going to pay for a home inspection, uh, but maybe they already have or maybe they will. Uh, but again, that's something I normally that I normally have it blank because um, it's not really something that's going to keep me from from getting a listing. Uh, this is something that I like to have clicked. Yes. Um, you know, if the situation were to arise that, that I could be a dual agent, um, you know, and, and maybe they've had a bad experience. So don't assume that maybe they said, Hey, I had a dual agent before and I felt like I got terrible service. Then good. I don't do that either. Right. <laughs> whatever, whatever is going to work with them. But ideally if you can get them to say yes, and that's, you know, potentially good for you. Um, yeah, so that's that's it. Uh, again, I have all my information in here already set. Um, you can you can do that within Skyscope as well. You guys should should save all of this stuff. So when you populate it, it'll automatically fill that stuff out. So you're not filling that out every time on your own. Um, and then they will sign on this last page, initial on every page, and you guys have a listing agreement, right? Um, again, the property disclosure. I'm going to sit with them on this part, um, and we're going to. Hopefully check no on every one of these, but um, as you can see, this house was built in 1940, right? So it is an older house. Um, I really don't have too many pictures uh, uh, um, except for what's on Google. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's an, it's an older house. It, I mean, there might be some stuff wrong with it, right? So uh, I'm going to have to walk them through that and see, you know, what's going on with that. Um, so we'll walk through the property disclosure um this one will probably be all knows um unless something needs to be changed uh again working with real estate agents disclosure um i know we've gone through this one before but you know again i'm typically just checking these three and and having them them sign at the bottom um we don't sign this one and then the lead paint which we spoke about um obviously you're leaving the, the buyer blank because we don't know who the buyer is yet um but ideally, you know, you want to ask them, like, as far as you know, is there any lead paint in this house, right? Uh, and, and typically the answer is no, but it, it could be a situation where they, they don't know or um, it has the original paint. Um, and if that's the case, then you would want to click one of these top ones and, and write in there kind of why. Um, but if there's no lead paint, I'm clicking these two and I'm signing here. They're signing and I'm signing here. So save some of that. I'll have to go back through that. But um, yeah, any any questions about the paperwork and when to use it, when not to use it, and things like that? I know that's a lot of a lot of forms to go through. Again, I would highly, highly recommend you guys going through each one of those forms, download it, print it off, like just read through it, practice with your girlfriend, your boyfriend, husband, wife, friends, like explaining it, like practice with them and try to have them sign it and have them ask you questions like, well, why would I sign this? Or why, you know, uh, why would I pay 6%? You know, or whatever the questions is like role play is literally the best way for you guys to learn. Um, and if you haven't done already, you know, find, find an agent to ride with on a, on a listing appointment. And I'm, I'm happy to have any of you guys ride with me on appointments. Um, so if you ever have time and want to, let me know. I'll, 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 next time I have the ability and I don't have someone else ride with me already, I'd be happy to, to take you guys on an appointment with me. Um, it's the best way to learn. So practice doing it. Go on listing appointments with agents. Watch them do it in person. Um, we'll really help you guys out. But but if you take nothing else away from today, get very comfortable with the, the paperwork. Um, read through it numerous times and practice, practice using it. So any other questions? Brian. Yes. 
so you explained uh, about you know when you work with the seller how about when when you work with the buyer uh, you initially sent only the, the only the that form that working with the real estate agent where you, you send uh, the agreement uh, with the that form as well um so yeah so i mean normally yeah they're working with the real estate agent and the the um the buyer agency agreement are the, the two forms i would send them to, to kind of start with um so do do you uh meet with them like person in person or because the the my question is how do, do you explain what they sign yes i mean usually usually unless i have a really long phone conversation with i mean again it depends on you know where they were referral or how how i got the lead and you know, who they are but um it there's a million different scenarios right but i mean typically unless i've had a very long conversation with them and and are in good terms with them already i'll, I'll send it to them beforehand but typically i'm going to meet with them at least show them my house first and then i'll have them sign those forms once i once i meet with them um but you also have clients that, that that don't sign that right away and and they don't sign those until they're putting in an offer right um obviously the the sooner you get them to sign that the better it is for you uh and the less you have to worry about them uh choosing another agent which obviously happens in our industry um but again uh the biggest thing and again the biggest thing with getting a listing um is is the rapport part uh the same thing same thing on the buyer side so the more, more more rapport you're able to build with these folks um the sooner the better uh so the sooner they feel more comfortable with you that they they like you and they want to work with you the sooner they'll they'll sign those forms if that makes sense yeah, every every situation is yep. a little bit different. Anyone else? You guys have been pretty quiet today. All right. Well, if we don't have any other questions, uh, you guys have my my information. Um, Matthew, thanks for uh, lending us your expertise and uh, joining joining us. Uh, mm -hmm. Hopefully, you get a couple offers uh, on your house this week. And uh, yeah, if you guys need anything, uh, let me know. But uh, if not, if you guys don't have a slam week full of working with buyers and sellers, go into Sky Slope, work on your paperwork and practice with it. Thank Brian, you, Brian, I have Thank one more question. Thank you, Brian. Thanks, guys. <laughs> go ahead. Brian? Yes. I'd have one more question for you. Okay. Um, it, it's not related with our uh, class today. Um, so I am trying to, um, I just bought a new tablet and, um, I, I uh, downloaded the, uh, one login part portal, um, app in this, um, tablet and is asking me for the, uh, to get started, please enter your organization's one login URL. Do you have any idea what was the, that address? So I can log in uh, using the tablet, not the phone. Yes, um, and the rest of you guys can jump off um, while I help her with this. Uh, let's just wait there. Awesome. But, yeah, but I can I can send that link to you. It, it should just be Realty One Group Revolution. Um, but I would have to go back through. Um, but I can I should be able to find that for you. All right, Brian, did you um, upload the video from last Monday? Um, last Monday's um, rev up. Yes. The finance part, yeah, I was um, on a vacation at the time. It was uh, my birthday. Sorry. I didn't think I saw you on there. Yeah, um, it was my birthday last weekend. <laughs> <laughs> well, happy, happy belated birthday. Um, okay. Yeah, let me um, let me reach out to Amanda and see if she posted that. Um, I'll try to get that sent to you. Um, okay. So. All right. Thank you. Of course. see um i will i will ask amanda about that um and get back with you what uh what tablet did you get just curious uh no it's just like uh, uh, it's not the one that i'm gonna use usually because i i hear uh i have i bought a laptop but mm -hmm. uh, um uh, i changed my phone uh and it, uh, Verizon had this deal they give you like for free uh, and a watch and a tablet. So it's ju just like the simple one is like um, Samsung uh, A7 or something. So it's, it's this kind. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Let me yeah. put that. Yeah. 
the chat. Um, it should be this. But it should be it should be real one group dot one login dot com. Um, you might you might not need all this other stuff. Okay, so um, it, it's it's without it's without because because I I put it like this, so it did not work. I don't know if you can see the my. Yeah, I can't. Have, but yeah, it should be the, the the beginning of this part. So at least it should be at least realty um, realty one group dot one login dot com. Um, that. Without slash. revolution, yeah, yeah, without without revolution, yeah. But that should that should get you there. And I, yeah, and you're right. I put it with with revolution. That's why it did not work. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you so much, Brian. Appreciate your help, you. like always. You're the best. Do you have any? Uh, did you have any other questions? Have you? Have yes, you, uh... I have a question about lender. Okay. So um. I only uh, know um to only Tony so far. Okay. Like, since I joined, so I I got a loan officer uh Gary Wood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, because they said Tony is in surgery and he's on leave. Yeah, yeah, he is. Uh, he is on leave at the at the moment. Um, Garrett is awesome. Um, he does he does a lot of our trainings. He is he is. Very good, young, full of energy, hard worker. Um, if you message him, he'll respond back very, very, very quickly. Um, can help you with comps if you need as well. Like so, he does a lot more than just just on the lending side. But um, if you want, um, I can send an email introducing you, or if you just want to email him directly, um, I mean, he'll he'll be happy to do a quick Zoom with you and, and introduce himself and what he does. Uh, but he is he is really good. I would definitely definitely recommend him. Um, and if you need someone else, let me know. I can introduce you to someone else as well. No, like, uh, usually, like the more like the more lender that we have is the better, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, normally you're gonna have two or three people that you feel really comfortable with. Um, and yeah, the 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 more options that you have, I mean, maybe you have somebody that's already you know used movement mortgage in the past. And that's what Garrett is. So maybe maybe you want to push him to someone else, right? Uh, or, or you know, maybe Garrett doesn't do as much VA loans, so you use a different lender that does that. So, yeah, it's definitely, I, I have two or three that I use on a on a regular basis. But um, if you want to email um, Garrett and introduce yourself, um, and then after this, I'll I'll send you an email uh, introducing you to a guy named Matt uh, Matt Brady. He does he does a lot of good stuff as well. Uh, and then you can kind of have have a couple of different connections that that you can recommend. Okay. So I have the, uh, he, on here on this brochure. I see a cell phone number. I don't really see email. I'll I'll send an email with both. So I'll, I'll send one to Garrett. And I'll send one to, to one to Matt. Okay, that would be great. Um, Thank you. Yeah, so I'll do that uh, the second we get off of here. But um, everything else going good? Yes, yes, yes. Um, I have like some people that like, they want to get a pre-approval. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean, so they can um I know I know Matt Brady definitely does. He has a link that you can just send them. Um, which is easy. I'm sure I'm sure Garrett does it as well. Um, so depending on depending on how you do it, um, I, I normally like once you once you get used to one of the one of the two people, I a lot of times I would like kind of send an introduction email um to, to Matt and to you know my client, the the Smiths. Like, hey, uh, Matt, I want to introduce you to Mr. and Mrs. Smith. They're super interested in buying a house in Concord. Um, they're they're hoping to be in the two fifty three hundred thousand dollars range, but uh, wanted to see if you'd be willing to help them get pre approved and help them in the process. Um, here's their email addresses, full names, and phone numbers. And then at that point in time, he'll you know re respond and and send them a link to them to get started, and and then he'll call and reach out to them. So that's normally what I do. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll introduce you to both those people as soon as we get off of here, and then you can kind of decide. If you want to use both of them or if you want to try them both out or, or however you want to do but yeah i'll i'll do that the second we get off of here yeah that's will be great all right man well it sounds like you're already uh got a couple of potential people so yeah that's that's awesome uh yeah you got, you've got my number man if you need anything you can call call and text me seven days a week man so don't don't wait just till till monday turn rev ups all right oh okay i see thank you so much have a great day yeah, have one. bye